Hello everybody and welcome back to another Bentley Davy Tutors Maths video. I know there's been an awful lot in the last couple of days, but we have a maths test coming up, so we thought we'd pump out as many as we can and try and go over every topic that will be covered in the test. So today's video uh, will be about coordinate geometry, and just before we begin, I did manage to kick Luke out of my house, and I did manage to get another uh, shirt uh, pulled together. Now, don't, uh, don't think about it too hard, because this is actually the same shirt, which would have some continuity issues with some of what we were saying in the previous videos, but it's all right, just ignore that and listen up to how to do coordinate geometry. Hi everyone, it's voiceover Jez here at now uh, 7.16 on Sunday, and I'd just like to apologize for how boring and monotonous I sound. Like I sound like Luke in one of his videos, which is not at all what I want to do, but this was filmed at like 5.40 a.m., uh, and I was in a big rush, so I'm sorry I think I get through the content at least, but yeah, it won't be super interesting, so sorry. So we're going to go through four different things in today's video. We're going to look at distance and midpoint, gradient, and then uh, graphing lines, and then looking at the equation of a line. So firstly, distance and midpoint. So distance and midpoint are very important when you are looking at coordinate geometry, because it's some of the most common questions that you'll be asked. You'll be asked to find the distance between two points, or the midpoint of a line. So how I'm going to do this video, because it's very formula-based, is I'm going to go through the formula, explain sort of what it's asking, and then uh, I'm going to do uh, just a quick little bit of uh, some example questions afterwards. So we're going to start off with distance. So um, if you're trying to find the distance uh, between two points and you don't have grid paper, it can be quite difficult. Um, but if you've got something, uh, say, like a line, right, you can always draw a right angled triangle with that line. And what do we know about right angled triangles is you can do Pythag. So you can realistically do that. You can get grid paper, do your line on the grid paper, draw a right angled triangle around it, and then um, you've got the distance of the bottom and the, uh, and the side, and then, then you can find the hypotenuse, which is your line, with Pythag. But is there a way that we can do this without grid paper so that you don't have to actually draw it? Well, yes, there is. And it's a great formula called the distance formula. So how the distance formula works is um, uh, D is equal to the square root of, so this is all under the square root symbol, open bracket, X2 minus X1, close bracket, squared, plus open bracket, y2 minus y1, close bracket, squared. So this is when you have points x, so one point is x1, y1, and one point is x2, y2. So as you can see, how the distance formula works is it's the square root of um, x2 minus x1, uh, and then you square that again, and then you add um, y2 minus y1, and that is also squared, and that's what the distance is equal to. So we're gonna go over to an example here. We have the distance of the line LM, where you've got L is, uh, L has the points uh, negative two and five, and then M has the points four and five. So how you determine this is that, uh, how you determine which one is X1 and Y1 and which one is X2 and Y2, is the furthest left point is the one where both of them will be X1 and Y1. So because negative two is further left on a number plane than four is, uh, L is the one that would be X1 and Y1. So let's try and plug this in. So distance formula, I'll repeat it again, is the square root of X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared. So we've got distance is equal to the square root of four minus minus two squared and then plus five minus five squared. So you've got six um, squared plus zero squared, which is root 36, which is six which means that our total distance is equal to six units, unless, uh, yeah, unless you're given any other um, units for that, which I assume you wouldn't be. So we'll go to another example, um, which is which point is closer to the origin? This is a question that you could always get because it uh, requires you to think a bit differently because it doesn't just give you two points. So the two different points that it does give you that aren't on the same line are... Um, G and H. G is 0.16 uh, and H is 3.5. Now, because your lines are actually going to the origin, which is 0, 0, um, 
you are actually, they are both x1 and y1, and so 0, 0 is x2 and y2. So we'll start off by doing the distance of OG, so O is the origin. So we've got 0 minus 1 squared plus 0 minus 6 squared, So we've and that's all under the square root. So we've got um, square root 1 squared plus 6 squared, so it's root 37, uh, so it's equal to 6 point something. Now you can either simplify this um, using thirds, except you can't because 37 is a prime number. So that's going to be your answer. It's just going to be root 37. But now we'll look over here at the distance between O and H. We've got 0 minus 3 squared. So this is, again, all under the square root. 0 minus 3 squared plus 0 minus 5 squared. So we've got 9 squared. Uh, sorry, we've got 9 plus 25, also under the square root. So we have root 34. Uh, again, cannot be simplified really anymore. You could do uh, it as root 2 times root 17, but that's not exactly very useful because you can't simplify it any further. But yeah, so we can see that... Um, uh, the, the H is closer to the origin than G is there, just using that nice little distance formula thing there. Now, what we're going to move on to is uh, midpoint. That's the next thing that's important to do. And midpoint is all about averages. Um, because if you want to find the middle of something, you've got to use a measure of central tendency, as Luke looked at in his uh, statistics video. And one of them is the average or the mean. So basically, how you find the midpoint of a line is you average the points. So again, we're running with the x1, y1, and x2, y2. And so how we uh, do this one is the midpoint formula is x1 plus x2 on 2, because that's the average, and then y1 plus y2 on 2. So for this example, we've got um, point E and F. Point E is negative 3, 1, and point F is 7, 5. So we've got uh, negative 3 plus 7 on 2, and then 1 plus 5 on 2 as well, which is 4 on 2, comma, 6 on 2, and then you get 2 on 3. Midpoint is really easy. All you're doing, um, you just got to remember the formula. If you can't remember it, all you need to remember is you get the two points that are x, add them, and divide it by 2, and you get the two points that are y, and then you add them and divide it by 2. And that's all you need for midpoint, which takes us through to the next section of the video, which will be gradient. So, gradient is basically the slope of a line or how steep it is. So, something with a higher gradient could be more like that. So it's a really steep line. Something with a lower gradient would be more like that. Um, yeah, so gradients are really, really important when graphing a line, as we'll see when we look at graphing lines, because there's the uh, equation for a line, which is y equals mx plus b or c, depending on how you were taught and uh, how they updated the curriculum or not. Um, but yeah, so I, I was taught y equals mx plus c, so I'll run with that. Um, the m there, which is what's multiplied by the, by the x, is the gradient, and it's very important when you actually go to graph the line. So, the gradient of the line is actually equal to rise over run. So again, to find the slope, so this is the gradient formula, this is the important one, you've got y2 minus y1 on x2 minus x1. So this time, neither of them are on 2, and they're not being squared or anything, it's just the y's on the x's, that's all you've got to remember, is the y is above the x, and then you also need to remember that it's the twos first and then minusing the ones. So that's all you need for that. Um, but we'll go through some examples here. Um, so if you uh, if you have the gradient formula, um, then you can pretty much work out what the gradient of any line is. So for this first example, we've got point A, which is uh, 3, 2, and point B, which is 11, uh, 8. That, that's, the, that's where the point is. So we go y2 minus y1, so we're going the 8, which is all the way across from the second, uh, from point B. That's y2 in point B. Y, uh, so 8 minus 2 uh, on, what is that? 11 minus 3. So it's 8 minus 2 on 11 minus 3, which is 6 on 8, which is 3 on 4. That's your gradient. I'll do one more. Um, so we have here um, point C, which is 4, comma, minus 6, and then point D, which is 1, comma, 4. So... Uh, our top line is going to be the y's, which is going to be negative 6 minus 4 on 4 minus minus 1. And that's the, those are the x's on the bottom. So there we have negative 10 on 5 or negative 2. There you go. That's your gradient. That's all you need to know for gradient. Now we're going to move on to graphing lines. Um, graphing lines is an important thing to do. Uh, and it's quite easy to do, but there are a variety of different ways that you can do it. Um, and one is easier than the other. So I will teach you both because one of them is probably what you used to do and then hopefully this new one is what you'll do because it's way quicker. So the equation of any line, as I just said before, 
um, is y equals mx plus c or b. Um, so the m is the gradient and the c or b is the y-intercept. So what that means is, uh, so there are a couple of special points on a line. There's the x-intercept and the y-intercept. And for any line, all you need um, to actually be able to graph it is two points. All you need for a line is two points. Um, and so then what we can say is if we're going to sketch the line y equals x plus 4, there are a variety of ways that we can do that. So we can do the, we can do the original way where you make a table of values and you put in 0 uh, is equal to 4 and then 1 is equal to 5 and x is equal to and 2 is equal to 6 and all that sort of thing. And then that gives you as many points as you need realistically. But as I just mentioned, there are only two points that you actually need to graph a line. And so there's a way better way that you can do it, which is way quicker, which is where you find those two key points of the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So if you're given an equation, which is like something like y equals um, uh, mx plus 4, and, and you're given that gradient, all you realistically need is the um, x-intercept and the y-intercept. And it already gives you the y-intercept. That number at the end is the y-intercept. So then all you need to find is the x-intercept. And I should go over what x and y-intercepts actually are. The y-intercept is the point at which the line crosses through the x-axis, unless I did that wrong, which is very likely. The x-intercept is where it passes through the x-axis, and the y-intercept is where it passes through the y-axis. There we go. I think I got that right. And so how you find them, how you find either of them if it doesn't give you a, a y-intercept at the end of the line, it always should, but if it doesn't, how you find the y-intercept is you set x to 0, and how you find the x-intercept is you set y to 0. So I'll do it with the x-intercept uh, here just for an example. So we've got that equation again, y equals x plus 4. We set y to 0, so 0 equals x plus 4. Subtract 4 from both sides, like the equation stuff that Luke taught. Then we've got negative 4 equals x, and so that's our x-intercept of negative 4. Now we have our two important points, negative 4 and 4. Draw a line straight through that. Boom. That's how you graph a line. That's all you need to do. We're going to do um, another quick thing. Um, so we've got the equation y equals 3x plus 1. Uh, so our x-intercept, our y-intercept is obviously going to be the plus 1 because it's the bit at the end. Uh, and so what we're going to look at is uh, finding an x-intercept. So we set y equals 0. So we now have 0 equals 3x plus 1. Take 1 off both sides. Negative 1 equals 3x. x equals negative 1 on 3. That is our x-intercept. Chuck them on the uh, number plane, line straight through them. That's your line graphed. You're all done. That is all we need to know for graphing lines in that format. Okay, so the next formula that I'm going to teach you is a bit of a different one in which you only need a gradient and one point, which seems great. Only problem is if you don't get given the gradient, you need two points anyway, so it doesn't help as much. But so this is a formula for uh, graphing the line again, but it is good because this is what you have when you've got points as opposed to the formula that we did just before where you're given y and, uh, and m, which you don't always get. So this next formula is y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. So I'll go through that with the example because it'll make it easier. So we've got points um, a, which is minus 5, 5, and b, which is 7, 10. So we need to find the equation of the line that goes through it. So, um, firstly, when we've got y minus y1 equals m, x minus x1, what we've got to do is we've got to find that m. So, remember, this is the gradient. How do we find gradient? Well, we go y2 minus y1 on x2 minus x1, which is 10 minus 5 on 7 minus minus 5, which gives us a 5 on 12. So, now we've got, we can plug in all our points where we needed them. We've got y minus 5 equals 5 on 12 bracket x minus minus 5, or then in the next line, get simplified to x plus 5. So um, it's going to be a bit difficult to times a bracket in our head by 5 on 12 because personally, I don't know how to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to cancel the 12 down the bottom and we're going to chuck it over on the other side by going uh, 12y minus 60 equals 5x plus 5. Now we've got 12y minus 60 equals 5x plus 25. So then uh, with all of our nice little jumbling things around, we end up with 12y equals 5x plus 25 plus 60, 12y equals 5x plus 85. Um, so y is now equal to 5 on 12x plus 85 on 12. Uh, and that's when we have the y equals mx um, plus c form there. So basically, yeah, that, that gives us what y is equal to. Uh, you just have to divide everything by 12. Um, and that's, yeah, that's pretty much how you do that with that uh, 
extra little step sort of thing. Um, I'm just trying to think in my head now, so excuse me if I go on some random tangent and then get it wrong. Unfortunately, I decided to cut out the random tangent, even though it's not because I promise it's not because I, I got it wrong. Um, I did get it right, but yeah, I just cut it out for convenience because it was just going to confuse everybody. Uh, but anyway, yeah, now to me with the outro. No, I'm not going to do another example question because it's just going to be the same thing, but that's all right. So that's all that we have time for in today's uh, Bowman Davy Tutors video on coordinate geometry. Hopefully you learned something or it was just revision of things that you already knew. That's that's what we always want is to make sure that it's jogging your memory in some way. So, uh, yeah, if you did enjoy, leave a like, subscribe. Uh, thank you. Catch on other maths videos because we have a load coming out at the moment. And goodbye.